we did it. I'm filled with a certain level of elation, I suppose is the right word, for the fact that we finally hit 20,000 subscribers. This is a this is an important milestone for me, you know? See, I don't know, 1,000 was a big milestone. That's the point where you're like, you've got an audience. And 10,000 is where you like start to really crest into thinking that it's going to succeed. But 20, 20 is something that I've been thinking about for a very, very long time because it means that I, that the growth is sustainable. It's not a one-off thing that's never going to go anywhere, you know? And I've been thinking real hard about what I was going to do in celebration of the 20,000th uh, subscriber. And, well, it's been a couple of days. I had been meaning to do this. I actually planned on doing it for the 10,000 subscriber special, but <laughs> uh, the... Uh, the timing just didn't work out because I kind of grew too quickly for that milestone to really count for anything. Uh, so I just kind of skipped it. And incidentally, uh, I'm coming up on my hundredth article. I have 99 articles and <laughs> get 99 articles in a witch ain't one. Anyway, uh, I've got 99 articles on the wiki and I've been thinking about what I was going to do for my hundredth. And I think that I'm going to meld the two together. So I, this morning, literally about, uh, I'd say, two hours ago, wrote an SCP article and turned on my Bandicam, which I own a uh, full version of. It's not the trial version or anything like that. I own a full version of it, uh, which does it's a screen capture software, and I used it to record the entire writing process. And I'm going to uh, speed it up by about four times, because it took me about an hour and 20 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of commentary as the video plays, to let you know what is going through my mind as I'm writing. Uh, the article's actually already posted to the wiki. That's actually included in the video. Um, and there were a few minor changes that I've made since it's been uploaded, just little errors here and there that I noticed after, the, <laughs> after I was done. And, uh, and that's about it. I just wanted to go ahead and put something up for you guys to really give you an inclination of how I write SCP articles. And that's what we're working with right now. So let's get started. Now, before we get started, I did have a pitch in mind, and I've actually been chewing on it for a few weeks now. I've actually had multiple pitches, but this is one that I felt was short enough for me to actually do as a video. It's essentially... One of those, I do I do a lot of articles where the core anomaly is a fairly simple thing. It's not super compl complex. There's not a whole bunch of added things to it. It just does one thing. And then I explore some of the consequences of that thing. Or I tell a story with that thing as the central premise. In this particular instance, the one sentence pitch is, This man can fly, but he can't fly if he's too fat. So let's get started. Here we go. New text document. Special containment procedures. Description. See, I do that to begin with. I was writing that to begin with, and then I was like, you know what? Just copy and paste, which is what I normally do. Yeah, who cares about the object class? It doesn't really mean anything. Is a human male that is capable of self-sustained? Nope. Self-propelled flight. At this point, I'm trying to think of the kind of the core characteristics of the anomaly. I've had the idea in my head for a while, but haven't actually, yeah, and now I'm looking up conversions for uh, metric because I'm an American and we use the imperial system over here and I barely know it, much less metric. <laughs> and uh, I'm just using it to get some approximations. I'm throwing numbers around. These, these are changeable. These are not absolutes right now. Yep, here we go. Speed. Entity is currently not capable of sustained flight, but is more mobile than one would expect. See, this is the point where I'm trying to like give an idea of the actual... like. Uh, I want you to know that if he's fat, he can't make it Euclid because it's humanoid. Who cares? I, at this point, I've got some basics down, but I want to look up an image. I tried to look up Fat Man, but it came up with the... Uh, nuclear bomb creative commons image and I, I looked at this and I said this is perfect for what I want because I want the uh, I want the people who were reading this to feel bad for my character 
the, the central character of this. And then I also changed the age just there because it has to fit the image that I'm going to be using. The guy in the image is definitely not 27 years old. I go for 47 here. I think I change it to 57 later because it it, it, it still feels a little young for 47. So I went ahead and kicked him up. Here, I'm giving him a series of things. <laughs> one, I wanted to make sure I was spelling sleep apnea right. And then I uh, couldn't remember if it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes is the one that you get as an adult from being overweight. So I looked that up as well. I know it's a, called, a, I always called it adult onset diabetes. Oh, and there... I was trying to figure out which sounded more uh, clinical, health conditions or health problems. And uh, what I did was I looked up, I googled both of them, and then I saw just from the first few results which one had the more official of results. And then I went with that one, which was health, uh, what was it? Health conditions. Yeah, and here I am sitting here and I'm thinking about this as like, generally friendly and personable. I want him to be, I want, I want, the, I want the reader to engage with this character and feel sorry for him. That is the whole point of this article. And that's the point of friendly and personable, but a little bit later on, I'm going to change my mind about that. I'm pretty sure. Here we go. We're starting to try and order our information because you got a lot. Sometimes I just do a scatter shot and I write a whole bunch of information down and then I try and figure out like what is necessary. What is a repeat piece of information? Oh, and I had to look up the uh, there's a little cut right here because I had to look up the image. I realized I'd closed the image out and I needed to have the images uh, source available for me. Um, although I think I ended up closing it out later anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. We're adding that back in. But uh, again, I think I take it out anyway. Uh, but yeah, I had to look up the source image again. So what I did was I believe I looked at the file because first thing I did was look at the history. But I opened it up in incognito mode so you couldn't see any like my search histories or anything like that. Nothing embarrassing is in there. There might be embarrassing things in there. It's not stuff I would be embarrassed by, but it's stuff people would probably poke me about. But uh, it just felt like I wanted to make sure everything there was I didn't want there to be any distractions. So uh, then I looked at the history and it had it, it give my normal browser history. N none of the stuff that I had actually looked up was on there. So I cut that out as well. Um, yeah. And now I'm starting to go into the special containment procedure. Sometimes I'll start in a description. I'll get a little bit into it, get a just to get a basic idea of what I'm dealing with, and then I'll go back to the special containment procedures to try and give give a bit of better give a bit of a better explanation of what's going on. Oh, when uh, <laughs> that was originally by any means necessary, I changed it to by reasonable <laughs> means because I was like, "What do you mean by any means necessary? It's not going to kill anybody." Here we go. We're going to lifetime supply contest winnings related to food. Current and, and then I'm like, that sounds really awkward. So giving a lifetime supply of Cheetos, Twinkies, and something else. Now I'm about to look up particularly unhealthy <laughs> junk food. Uh -huh, no, nothing, nothing, nothing here that helps me at all. So, and then I think about McDonald's and I'm like, that's unhealthy fast food. But then I thought about something else: pizza deliveries, free pizza from an established extant. Uh, SCP front company, uh, the Spicy Crust Pizzeria. And then I thought about, just get rid of the Cheetos and Twinkies. That's a distraction. We'll just put in the Spicy Crust Pizzeria. And here we go. And and then we have to explain how, how does he, how do we justify that he got this? Although, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not entirely sure that's necessary. I know it's still in the article that I wrote, but I'm not entirely sure it's required. Anyway, I'll, I'll give that some more thought later. Here we're going through its anomalous properties to basically explain that as it gets fatter, it can't fly. Uh, I'm not particularly, you'll see I'm just sitting here, nothing is happening. This is me literally just staring at my page and thinking about it. Here we go, we're moving some stuff around. We're thinking about uh, how we're going to write this exactly. And also at the same time I'm looking at it, it's kind of thin. I, when you characterize something like this, you want to give, in order for there to be a connection to your character, there's got to be more than just a couple of lines describing them, you know? So you have to give some of their events in their lives. What did I just get rid of? I didn't quite see, but here we go. Just to make sure that he doesn't get skinny. 
Yeah. If he falls below 150 kilograms, entity is to be remanded to Foundation custody for permanent containment. Also, this is... I accidentally hit the wrong thing. I was, that's where I changed it to 57 instead of 47. I think I must have hit, like, Shift F5 or Shift F6 or something. I don't know, but it inserted the date and time, which was certainly strange. Here we go. And then we're just changing that to a footnote. And now we're condensing that, maybe, but we're not entirely sure yet. Still just kind of... Yeah, here we go. Separate it back out. Its current mass is incapable of flight. There we go. And now we're starting to change what it... Because it's like, it's capable of flight? What does that mean? So instead, we're, we're going with something a little bit more specific. It's capable of generating a telekinetic lifting force directed at itself. And now we're moving stuff again. Because now it's... The, the, the core of the original part of the description is going to be focusing on its telekinetic lifting force. So some of the other stuff has to move. This capacity only extends to its own body, and the entity has shown no capacity to lift other objects with this ability. I was going to say with this ability or with its ability or whatever, but then I just put a period because that was extra words that it didn't need. It's self-limited to approximately 103 kilograms of weight. And the, at this point, I don't actually know what these numbers are in pounds, but I have a general sense of what's high and what's low. At a healthy weight, and I do know that much. Of 73 kilograms, the entity is capable. That's the distance and speed thing that I had earlier. As additional weight is added, his speed is inversely. And this is the, this is trying to go for clinical as much as possible. It's inversely affected by the side, the weight. So as the weight goes up, the speed goes down. And this is me. God, that is a loud snoring. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to actually edit this. So, so you might catch me repeating myself a couple of times. But I'm just going to go through this. Any speed of movement is inversely affected by the entity's weight. Because, I mean, I can't edit this, right? It's a 20-minute video of just me looking at this thing. If I uh, if I had to edit it, it would make it much worse. Self-directed is capacity for self-direct flight. I think I'd take that out so it doesn't really matter that I've got it wrong. <laughs> I guess I'll look after I'm done recording that. At a weight of approximately 73 kilometers, but further weight increases, yeah. This is where I'm starting to... I'm starting to get a really good idea of what's going on. Now, the uh, age, weight, the age, height, and weight thing, that, that usually has to go in the first paragraph, but the first paragraph needs to be focused in on this stuff. So, I'm going to take the first sentence and just describe some physicality of it. The 57 years old, its height, its weight... Um, It's capable of projecting a telekinetic lifting force on itself. That, that gives you enough. Yeah, that gives you enough. So then the next, the last sentence right now is the speed of the entity's movement while utilizing this is inversely affected by its weight. And then we have a whole paragraph devoted to what that means exactly. So the first paragraph is just a summary, sort of. And then the rest of the description can go into detail on some of the less than clear, anything that seems like it needs further expansion. There we go. And now we're starting to set up a possible end here that I don't actually know where I'm going to go with this yet, by the way. Uh, I just wanted to get a decent... Yeah, here we go. Now we're going to start grabbing some code. Uh, we're looking for... I always go to my own articles. I mean, I've got a hundred of them, so I just kind of look through my own articles for uh, the kind of code I need. And there it is. I need some collapsible code. It's like, I kind of could probably do it, but it's better to just copy and paste and have to worry about the problem. You'll notice with this particular set of collapsible code, there's a hide equals uh, quote quote space quote that means that when you open uh, the collapsible the close button is actually invisible because it's just a space here we go we're setting these incident logs up as kind of a uh, little bit of a, a way to explain how the foundation is affecting this person and the core concept is kind of that the foundation is trying to be nicer to its anomalies, and it's thinking about a guy who can fly, but he can't fly if he's fat. So just keep him fat and let him live a life, even if it's a bad, if it's even if it's a life that's a little bit less than uh, ideal. Rather than having to worry about keeping him in a, uh, I mean, the U.S. and the U.S. government pays for his housing and all these other stuff. He basically is self-containing at this point, as long as you can keep him fat. 
right here, uh, he starts to, yeah, but, but of course, you know, fat people constantly think about the idea of losing weight. This is sort of actually focused in on uh, a personal, you know, it's a personal story because I'm, I'm, I'm overweight and I've constantly trying to lose weight and I'm constantly failing, right? Uh, and so this guy is literally, yeah, and this is where I'm fine. I'm thinking I'm going to do a, bu I'm sorry, a bulleted list to show in individual uh, things here. So it's a solution is these various uh, things that we're going to do. Let me take a drink of water real quick. So right, this is just some basic stuff. Like he he starts seeing weight loss stories on the internet and on TV, and so the foundation is. To, and this is where I'm changing it. So instead of recent incidents, it's going to be individual incident logs. Uh, recent incidents is going to be the heading for it. That's just some formatting changes. Documentaries be shown on the long term effects of weight loss. Like the, how the you know the guy starts watching The Biggest Loser and thinks that he can lose weight. So instead of dealing with that problem, the foundation and this is me copying and pasting the format so I can do it easier the second time around. Um, yeah, instead of doing the uh, they want to teach him that you know those people gain that weight back you like ninety five percent of the time or some crazy high number. And sometimes and I think most of those people gain more weight back than they had in the first place. So. <laughs> I had an idea. I, I'm not actually still sold on this log, come to think of it. But yeah, show incident 50. I might actually still get rid of this. I'm still not 100% here. The, the post is up, but I'm still th I'm still thinking about certain parts of it. But yeah, this log was, it kind of feels like an outlier. I didn't like the word rotten. The idea was that they literally go into his house and replace his... He goes out and buys fresh fruit and vegetables, so they just literally go into his house and take the fresh fruit and vegetables and replace them with rotten fruit <laughs> and vegetables, which is sad and terrifying, actually. <laughs> and here, um, I looked at the top part and I was like, oh, it just has solutions. What happens after the... You know, what happens after you do these things? It sees his interest in loss, weight loss from all of their things they did. And then finally, see, that was the thing. I saw the solution for this, and I was like, well, what happens after you replace his decomposing produce? Does he just go out and buy new ones? No. He goes, he throws it all out, and then he orders a bunch of free pizza from his lifetime supply of pizza. But they decide to continue monitoring him because, who knows, maybe tomorrow he'll decide to do it again. Now, this is where we finally get into kind of a ending and in this at this point i still don't know how i'm going to end this has begun aerobic exercise now i should make a point here i can't spell exercise for the life of me and i, I learn this the hard way every time i try and type it in chat uh, and i see the correction but especially here because i wrote it a whole bunch of times probably about at least a half a dozen if not more and each one of them was wrong <laughs> and it doesn't come up until i actually paste it into the uh into the field <laughs> And here I'm trying to think about, like, okay, what's the solution? He started exercising, walking along the sidewalk, ugh, sidewalk outside his home. So the foundation literally goes out to his neighborhood and starts digging up the sidewalk to fix, to quote unquote, fix it. And they're basically going to take as long as they possibly can to try and discourage him without, you know, causing suspicion. It's still misspelled exercising. And also there's a formatting error there where the uh, space that I forgot to put in. I have to fix that later on. Because it's, it, it's not a formatting error necessarily, but like for the first two, the solution and the result are separated by an extra space. And the uh, they're not separated by an extra space in the third one. And it doesn't look like it'll be separated. This, maybe I'll fix it in the fourth one. I don't know. Oh, wait. Okay, solution. Yes, bulleted. Yeah, he's gonna, he decides that since he can't walk on the sidewalk, he goes to the park. And the SCP Foundation, trying to be nice to this guy, decide that the option, the best option is to rob him at gunpoint. To scare him into not leaving his house, which is more terrifying than exchanging his fresh fruit for decomposing fruit or whatever. And he started doing this regularly because that's what the words daily walk mean to him. Uh, so they, th they threaten him with a gun, demand his wallet, and then the other one uses a baseball bat to break his femur. 
which, again, terrible. Also, still misspelled exercising. Okay, now, at this point, in any story, a lot of people would do, yeah, see, yep, that was me. My first instinct was to write a disappointed note from the ethics committee going, you guys are terrible people. We shouldn't do this, right? Um, and then I thought about it and I was like, no, that's a bad idea. The ending note that explains everything. And <laughs> I come up with an idea here and I don't even realize what I've come up with until about uh, probably about a half. An <laughs> here we go. I, f I figured I, <laughs> I wrote down containment at large program. And then I was like, oh, shit, that is an, in an, an incredible pun on <laughs> Pun title for this and I was like that's way too on the nose and then I looked up synonyms and I was like no you know what it's fine it's fine but uh yeah yeah so the break is femur and the ethics committee is like okay fine let's stop trying to make this work just recapture the guy and put him in a cell that would be and chain him down that would be more humane than what we're doing right now yep and here here I am I'm looking at him like is that good yeah but yeah, I wanted to write that as a note that was literally saying those things. And I was like, no, let's just cancel the con the program. Like, let's just say that. Okay, copy and paste. And then I was going to post it, right? And I realized I'm in the incognito mode, so I'm not logged in. So I have to, lo <laughs> I have to open it up in an actual browser. <laughs> and I'll hit contribute, but that was not what I wanted. Um, and, and plus 4613 was open. I always like to take numbers with uh, one three in them. You're about to see me completely for uh, I spe also misspelled pizzeria every single time I wrote it, apparently. Uh, yeah, so I fixed ex exercise like, I don't know how many times. Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, and I'm grabbing the code to change the theme. And I am changing uh, information here. Grabbing uh, the image source, which I guess I did, didn't lose. Uh, yeah, and I, I promise I did not come up with, then that came up, I was like, <laughs> let's rename it, SAP 4613, you're about to see something interesting here, uh, which I, uh, it may not come up immediately, but I'll show you in a second, or I guess you'll see in a second, uh, yeah, I, I again, had to look up sleep apnea to make sure I was spelling it correctly, all right, see that right there, that image won't work, you'll see it in a second, because I put SEP in caps for the image, uh, file name. And believe it or not, for the yeah, I'd already posted it and had to fix it immediately. But uh, yeah, when you upload a file uh, for an image like that, it is case sensitive. It has to be exact. S yeah, so I took it from SCP Caps to SCP, and that's me reserving a comment page. Made sure I upvoted it because I always upvote my own stuff. Here's the article already ready. I saw an error, and I'm about to end. I think I'm about to end the recording right now. But um, yeah, came up with a couple of changes, and then, yeah, I changed the for the like the form of that. Yep, it, it, I just hit the stop button. So that was the whole thing from start to finish. Uh, I'm just trying to give you kind of a running tally of what was going on in it. I, when I do an SCP article, this is generally about how I do it. Like I just sit down with an idea that's already in my head and then I just write until I get to a conclusion. And sometimes I can't figure out a good conclusion and I just have to sit there and like I'll put it off to the side and I'll come back to it. And sometimes like this, I come up with something that I find satisfactory and then I just end it. Uh, there's a few more changes I think I made to the containment procedure wording and a f like a few things along the way that I changed. And I also put uh, containment at large as the title of it because... That's too perfect for a, you know, at, at large, making him fat. And I don't think you need that explained to you, but just too perfect of a pun title. So I went ahead and just used it. Anyway, this is my gift to any prospective SCP writers out there. Hopefully you can see in a real time sense, or at least 4X times real time, a uh, sense of how I go about writing an SCP article and how you can go about kind of exploring your SCP ideas and turning them into an SCP article, a very simple SCP article at that. I have no idea how this is going to go over on the wiki. I think it's at plus five right now. I've got six upvotes and one downvote from some guy who constantly downvotes everything I post. There's a few people like that, believe it or not. I think I've I made some I made some people angry at me. Let's just put it that way. 
you know, people talk about how uh, famous authors can get away with a lot and like their articles keep getting upvoted and all these other things. But I'll tell you right now, sometimes the problem is that there's, you, you, once you've been on the wiki enough, there's plenty of people out there who will downvote everything you ever do. So keep that in mind. Anyway, thank you very much for 20,000 subscribers. I, I mean, a year ago, I never would have considered this as a possibility. Something I was working towards. Not going to lie, it's something I was working towards, but I, I, I don't know. I spent a whole year building up to 2,500 subscribers, and then in like four or five months now, I've managed to go up to 20,000. It's insane to me. It's, it's great, though. If you like the idea of me writing an SCP and recording it and like giving you running commentary... Let me know in the comments down below, and definitely, definitely, if you want to see more content from me, hit the subscribe button. Like everyone else, the of the like these twenty thousand people already have. Join them and join me. And my God, man! Also, if you want to support this content directly, you can go to patreoncom forward slash and join my Patreon. I've got so many patreon backers who are helping me to continue to make this content full time it's amazing to me that this is a possibility i thank you guys for letting me know i'm not alone out here and i will see you on thursday <laughs>